Hello everyone and welcome to the back room. This video is a quick look at a common 1050 problem which I hope will help anyone else who encounters the same problem with their 1050. Rather than showing the process of how I tracked down the fault, I'm simply going to show you what it was and what the fix is so you can bring your drive back to good health quickly. In the process then of making a different video, I needed an Atari 8-bit and a disk drive and this time I decided to use my stock 800XL and 1050 drive. Inevitably however switching on the drive revealed a problem and the power LED lit up but the drive itself was dead. That of course suggested a live 5 volt rail but a dead 12 volt rail which is a common problem with the 1050. So it was time to open up the 1050 and have a look. The drive internals are very easy to access. There are six screws underneath, four in the case, here, here and there, and two in the front bezel. So if you remove these, remove these, and you can lift the upper half of the case at the rear and slide it forward to enable the bezel to clear the mech. So once inside I powered it up again and very quickly it was obvious that the giant heat sink at the rear here was super hot and that meant there was a short somewhere. So I tested the 7812 voltage regulator in circuit using a multimeter and sure enough, it had a short. I removed it and then I tested it again and as you can see, no short. Clearly it was something upstream, a capacitor or a diode then. Looking at the schematic you can see that there are a number of caps associated with a 12 volt rail. These I tested in sequence, lifting but then removing to test out of circuit C70, which is here on the board and C65 which is just behind it. C70 is an electrolytic, it's 47 microfarad, 16 volt and it's this little thing here and there is a tantalum behind it which is C65 but neither of those were shorted. They were shorted in circuit but not shorted lifted out of circuit. So then I started at C62, which is this one over here behind the bridge rectifier, and I went through every other capacitor and diode ahead of that 12 volt voltage regulator. And I still couldn't find the short. <laughs> and then I remembered watching an excellent Jan Beta video from a year or two ago uh, in which he was... Um, repairing and restoring an Atari 1050 and about halfway through the video he ended or encountered a similar problem. He had a short which he couldn't track down. Eventually Jan lifted one leg of each of caps C42 and C43 which are these two here and found that C43 was the culprit which is this one. So I did the same. I lifted one leg of each and yeah C43 was the culprit. Now there was no longer a short on the board. Clearly that was the problem. So C42, C43 and C70 are all rated at 47 microfarads, 16 volts. And I happen to have some of those in stock and having tested all of them with a multimeter and an ESR meter, 43 had a dead short. Yes, that's this one. 
I'm 42 and 70 were out of spec, so I replaced, or I'm about to replace, all three.
And of course, while you're in here, it makes sense to clean the head and uh, lubricate the rails. And so with the drive back together, it's time to give it just another test. And that was the problem solved. Now there might be other electrolytics which are also out of spec, but the drive is working and that's good enough for now. At some point when I have more time, I will check and replace as necessary, but for now, I just need to use this drive as part of another video. Interestingly, the three larger caps, C67, 68, and 71, are all within spec, so that's good. And that's it. As I said, just a little video in the event that anyone is searching for a quick fix for their 1050 with the same problem. Thanks for watching, everyone, and join me again in the back room to see this drive and its companion 800XL doing some shortwave decoding in a future video.